Hey everyone, it's Kevin from visualproductivity.net. Uh, I wanna cover a couple of things. I wanna give you eight tips before you start using my, my XMind 7 cheat sheet. All right, if you've got the cheat sheet already, hopefully you've got it in front of you on the About Kevin page. If you don't have it yet, you can head over to visualproductivity.net and sign up for it there. I call it the XMind 7 cheat sheet. All right, eight things guys, here they are. Number one, search for what you want. This is important because if there's so much here, I've got about 17 or 18 tabs, there's a lot of things going on, and if you don't search, you might be sitting there clicking and opening and closing things for a long time. So, for instance, if you've got the free version, there's still a pretty decent find and replace. So if I hit Control F, which is like we say here, or you can go to Edit, Find and Replace, we'll go here and I'll put in, I'm gonna put in the Gantt. Maybe we're looking for information on the Gantt chart. I'll go ahead and I can choose what I want. So I can, I don't, re, don't want to replace it, obviously. We're going to go through and we're going to look at either forward, backward, that's fine, either the current map or the entire workbook. We're going to choose the entire workbook. It's going to go forward and it doesn't tell me how many, but at least it will find these things and it will cycle through them as I go. So there's one and then there's another one and another one. And so you can go through and at least find what you're looking for. It may take you a couple of extra seconds. If you do have XMind Pro already, you can go to Window, and then go to Search, and that one now, if I type in Gantt, let's have a look. It actually gives me a list of all the times I mentioned Gantt in this, and then you can just double click, and you can go to that exact instance of what you're looking for. So I'll double click right there, and it'll flip me to the exact map that we're on. So that's just a tip. Using, using Search, whether it's the Pro Search or whether it's the basic Find and Replace, use search to find what you want, it'll be a lot easier. Number two, look for clickable links. I have got clickable links everywhere. Anything that's blue means it's a hyperlink taking you somewhere on the internet. Uh, the T stands for topic and C stands for central topic. So let's get a look for a couple of examples. If I go into, let's say, pro features, let's close this one. You can see I've got a video on the GAN view, so I can just, I'll go click on it. And there we go, it'll open up YouTube with that instance there, or whatever I've got you going toward. Most of the links will either be to YouTube or to my website. So just so you know, but if you want, if you're not sure, hover over the link and it will tell you where the link will take you before you click on it. You can see as well here where I'm talking about XMind Pro, and I tell you it has all these extra features. It includes the free features, so I don't talk about the free features, but if you follow the link, It'll take you to the XMind free and it describes all the free features. So that's an idea of what you can do if you look for clickable links. There's tons. I've got lots and lots of video tutorials and also tutorials on my website. Make sure you check those out. Expand and collapse. Now, I don't want you getting my map and then saying to me, oh, there's not much content here. So it's, I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but not always if you're new to my mapping is you can see a little plus sign by the end of this note. If I click on the plus sign, it expands and gives me more information. Conversely, now there's a minus sign here. I can click on that and that will collapse it. I have some other keys here. You can use the, the multiplication or, or the division signs as well to expand and collapse more of things as well. All right, what does this little arrow sign or greater than sign mean? Uh, what I'm trying to get across when I'm communicating this is trying to go through the menus. The example I have is here is file and then the arrow and then new. What I'm trying to get across is all I want you to do is go to the file menu, click on file, and then go to new. So in a couple of cases there might be two or three steps, but it's mostly saying go here and then do that. Again, using our minus sign, I can close that up. Use the enter key and the tab key. I just make sure, I wanna make sure this is clear because otherwise you're gonna be sitting there using these links up top and it's gonna take you forever to make mind maps. If you want to add something below what you're already working on, hit the enter key and then you've got a new node. If you wanna go one, make a child node, one go one below where you currently are, you hit the tab key. And you see how now it's gone one level lower than this level. I'll delete that one as well because I want to make sure this I keep this nice and clean for you guys. Um, the F4 key to add notes. And the F4 key is just here. If I'm searching the web and I find some a great article and I want to copy and paste it somewhere, but I don't want to have 8,000 different, different nodes, what I can do is I can open this up and I can hit F4 and it opens up this. And I can 
I can add a note here. And then when you add the note, I can click anywhere else on the screen, and it'll close that note up, and now we can see it's got a note. That way, I can still see a topic, and if I want the details, if I want to see what that article was I found on the internet, I can open it and I can read it. If you ever want to get rid of a note, it's easy. I would hit Control A or just delete everything in it, and then just click somewhere off, and that note disappears. Very powerful feature though, just adding longer text to things that you want somewhat hidden just to make sure it's there. And if you do have a, the pro version, if you have a pro version, the search will actually search inside the notes. It's a really cool feature. All right, how to move and adjust the map. This is a newer feature. They just added this now and I've been asking for it for a while. If you hold the right mouse button down, if you've got a PC obviously, you can drag around this map. You can also use the middle scroll button. A lot of times I'll use the scroll button mostly even for just scrolling up and down. You see how I can scroll it vertically by using the, the mouse button. What I recommend you do if you're thinking about buying XMind Pro or XMind Plus is check out the cheat sheet, look at a few of the tutorials that I run through and just say to yourself, would I use this? And for some people they're like, oh my goodness, I can print as an SVG. Oh, I can use this brainstorming mode. And there's one thing that sticks out and like, yeah, I need this thing, it's awesome, that's exactly what I want. And for some people, it's just, it's not there. So go ahead, check out a couple tutorials to see if it's gonna work for you. And if it's not, hey, no big deal. Don't stress out about it. So there you go, just a few quick tips to help you on your way when you start working with the x 7 cheat sheet. I just wanna make sure that it's useful for you because that's the reason why I'm making it. It's no use making it if it's not gonna be useful to you. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave it down below. Head over to visualproductivity.net, leave something there, or email me. I've got lots of ways to get a hold of me. So we'll leave it there for now. Hoping to see you a lot more in my other videos as well. So guys, we will talk soon. We'll see ya.